Welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today is going to be a fantastic day. It quit raining finally, but it's still pretty muddy outside, so we're not going to head up to the sawmill just yet, maybe tomorrow. But I have a whole list of things to do down here in the shop and also some stuff to do the chimney. So you guys hang in there. We've got a lot going on. Let me cover a few things before we get started. I put a post on Instagram the other day about my Johnson's Paste Wax. A lot of you guys might be wondering, why do you have, what is that, 20? Yeah, 20 cans of Paste Wax right there. Well, here's the reason why. A lot of you guys may not be aware of this, but Johnson's decided to stop making this wonderful product about a year ago. And people have been using this stuff for longer than I've been alive. And it's the best product I have ever used on my cast iron machines, on my table saw, my planers, to keep the rust away. And they quit making it, and they really didn't explain why. So when I found out about that last summer, which was actually six months to the date that they stopped making it, I got on eBay and bought as much as I could afford. Back when they was making this stuff on a regular basis, you could probably go to Home Depot and spend about seven or eight dollars and get a can of it, and it will last you several years. Right now on eBay, I just checked, $100. People are price gouging because you can't get it anymore. That's a shame. And I'm not sure why they quit making this stuff. If one of you guys are aware of the reason why, leave us a comment down below and everybody will know. I'm not sure why they quit doing it. It sells. You go in almost any garage in America and you'll find a can of this stuff. It's amazing they quit making it. I don't understand why. I also got a lot of questions about this vice mount hooks to the post right there. You can put your vise on it and it frees up floor space because there's no stand. Now this was expensive. I got it on Amazon. It was about $130. If you're interested in it, there's a link down below to where I found it. I'll probably buy two more of these, one for the sawmill and one for the house garage. This is a real handy little mount. It's pretty stout too. Once you put some really deep lad bolts in it, it's not going anywhere. But like all things, it does start to rust. Need to put some paste wax on that. And the last thing to discuss before we get started are suspenders. My buddy Chris Killinger up in Ohio has started making and selling suspenders again. And check these out right here. He's now making them in the color of green. Man, that's nice right there. I really like this. So if you're interested in these suspenders and you guys have been asking me about them for years, there's a link down below to KillingerOfficial.com. You can go buy a pair. The first thing on my list today is work on the molder and it's not broke down, but I did get a new accessory for it, a longer fence. So right here is the fence that comes from the factory. It works just fine, but it only goes to right there and it stops. So what this will do is give you a guide. So when you start pushing your boards through the molder, you can push it against the fence and be a little bit more accurate. And it also comes with an extra roller guide right there. And this is adjustable. It has multiple holes for multiple width of wood. And that gives you a little pressure on your lumber as you push it through on the fence and keeps it straight. All right, guys, that install went pretty fast. I checked my alignment. I'm still in good shape. And that gives me an additional 39 inches of fence right there. That's gonna be nice to have. The next thing on my list is finish off the chimney. My two foot section of pipe finally came. So let's get on the roof and get that finished up. In case you guys haven't noticed, I don't like climbing ladders and I'm not a fan of heights. Some guy asked me why it takes me so long to climb a ladder. Well, I'm not a fan of it. They make me kind of nervous. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the reason why. Take off this cap. Windy up here. Well, I'll tell you what, that stuff works good. It slides right on. Then you twist it. And that's all you gotta do. Looks like about maybe 30 inches of clearance from the peak here at the roof. That's what people say you need to do, so that's what we'll do. I am glad that is over with right there. Let's go do something else. 
All right, friends, the next thing we're gonna work on is this wall right here. I got about two inches of closed cell insulation in some places it's even thicker than that. So I think I'm done on insulating the wall. Now we need to cover it up. So up on the ceiling, I've been putting this old barn tin with insulation on top of it. And I think it looks really good. Dad came the other day and actually helped me work on it. I just about got it finished, but I got a lot of it left over. I bought more than I needed. So we're gonna take our extra tin and come up here just above this fern strip and attach it and kind of have a Wayne's coating effect on the wall. And then we'll do shiplap above it. I think it's gonna look pretty good. And I also need to put one more masonite board, which is this stuff right here, above this one up into the thimble right there on the pipe. So I'll cut these to length and where I make the cut will be on the floor, so if I'm off a little bit, you won't see it, and the factory edge will be at the top. And to make that cut, we're gonna use our Makita Nibbler. This right here, friends, is another great investment. It's over $300, but you gotta have it if you're cutting metal. And like everything else today, there's a link down below to my Amazon store if you want to go check it out. Well worth the money. Let's go see how it looks. Before we do that, let's clean some of this kyarn off the back of it. Kyarn, if you're not familiar with that word, I think you spell it K-A-R-N. Maybe C-A-R-N, I'm not sure. But my grandmother used to say that word when she'd refer to something that's nasty, like kyarn in the bottom of a sink. So we got a lot of kyarn on the back of this metal. Let's get that cleaned off first. Did you look at all that kyarn? That's better. Most of that done, I came up short over here, but I got two little pieces of pine. I'll just trim that out, and make it look okay. That's back here in that corner. Nobody's gonna never see it anyways. 
But over here on this side, I got about a 10 inch gap. I thought about putting a piece of cedar, something kind of unique right there. But since it's gonna be hidden from the firewood anyways, we'll probably just put one more piece of metal on there. And we'll be done with the lower part of the wall. And we can start making our shiplap. The hatefulest cat on YouTube is with us. Hello, mama. Well, looky there. There comes cabbage. You two cut it out. That last piece up, it's a little uneven over here on the side, so we'll cover that up with a piece of trim. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, friends, the metal part of this wall is done. What do you guys think? I think it turned out pretty good, actually. I think it's gonna look really good when I make the shiplap and put it right above this tin. I think it's gonna look really good, actually. Still, I put that masonite board on there. I keep on forgetting about that. So I'm getting ready to run a board through the molder. Show you guys my setup. I got my shiplap cutters right there there's one i should have cleaned that one before i put it on here but that's okay got my other one right there and i got it adjusted for about six inches on the width we'll go ahead and run one board through the molder and see how it looks when it comes to these molders and you set it up for a profile in this case shiplap it usually takes two or three boards to get it right there's these little spacers that go under the cutters and you have to adjust those a few times to get the profile that you're after. So for you guys out there that have this machine, or maybe you've ordered this machine and you're waiting on it, I think Woodmiser is about maybe eight months behind on these right now, maybe longer, maybe shorter, I'm not sure. When you go to make something like shiplap, you wanna go ahead and make all that you're gonna need because the likelihood of getting that exact same board or that dimension to run through that machine again after you do it is highly unlikely because it's hard to get those tolerances exactly where you had them before just because of all the variances here. Mama Two's down here with us. This right here, friends, is the, uh, I guess you would call her the official shop cat because she stays down here all the time. Now you guys see the other cats on the channel. You see Cabbage and Blue and all those guys. Well, this right here is the mother. We got her uh, spayed right after she had those kittens, by the way. That's why, that's why we don't have cats running around here everywhere. But she stays down here all the time. So we got the machine set up. We got the new fence installed. Let's run a piece of pine through it and see how it looks. I just about forgot about this step. Before I run it through the molder, I like to run it through the grizzly planer and kind of skip plane it to knock off any high spots. That board is an inch and an eighth on the thickness. I got the grizzly set at one inch, and then the molder set at three quarter. So we'll take off a little bit of material right here before we send it through. 